to do another guitar review. Wait. Oh. 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 Oh, what's happening to me? I have brought the goods. Beam me up. To boldly go where no man has dared to go. Again. <laughs> yes. I never thought I would get to see another one of these. But I am pleased to present to you guys the Gold Prism Modern Flying V. And we're doing this episode in true Halloween style. I've got my uh, Captain Kirk going on here because I figured I look the most like him. But let's go ahead and re-review the Modern Flying V in a different color. I'm going to hide some Star Trek references, see if you can find them all. Feel free to put the timestamps in the comments. Well, let's go for it. So the Modern Flying V was released earlier this year, and I was the first one to actually buy one of these things and show the world what it is capable of and what it looked like in person. Now, unfortunately, at that point in time, I had purchased Ebony Prism, which turned out to more so be Purple Prism, and I was a little bit disappointed at that, but I kind of grew to love that color. But I said in that video, I thought I would go for a gold next, and I think the gold is just the most beautiful thing because, well, let's face it, it is the Star Trek emblem. These were essentially meant to be futuristic flying Vs, even though the flying V was too far ahead of its time the first time. I think this is the exact same type of thing. This was a limited edition run. There's 33 of each color. Yeah, I'm sure you got some prototypes. So we've got about 100 of these kicking around. But this is not a completely original design. Now I've never seen anything official, but these are very reminiscent of a Jackson design called the Roswell Rhodes. Now it's not completely the same. Their fin is a lot longer and a lot pointier. And the main run of those guitars is actually all aluminum. The insides of them are hollowed out. They have a maple neck with an ebony fretboard as well as the aluminum headstock, and they are freaky guitars with awesome crop circle inlays. I would love to do a full review on them, but those are essentially really rare guitars that came about in the mid 90s. So flash forward 2018, you have this kind of a tribute to that. A lot of people say it's a rip off of a design. Can of work. Honestly, I'm really surprised we never saw a lawsuit come about. And as long as we're being honest here, I think the release of these renewed the interest and taught a lot more people about the Roswell Roads, which will definitely be nice for collectors' pockets if they have to sell theirs. But let's talk about the specs of this golden beauty. You do have a maple top on these, so that's what makes it completely different from any other flying V. Well, for most flying Vs, I mean, there are things like the V and other limited edition runs that also have that. But you've got a mahogany back with a mahogany neck with the apex head carve, which basically is just a fancy way of saying you have a freaky rhino Ooh. horn volute on the back of your headstock. And these are rich light fret boards. You have Gibson's 496R500T pickup combination in gold covers. Those are essentially very hot pickups. These will do metal very well. And just in case you need to tone it down a little bit, you can set these phasers to stun just by rolling off the volume knob a little bit. But speaking of volume knob, you have a master volume and a master tone with a three-way selector switch. And your hardware will vary depending on which color you have. The gold one, you get gold-plated hardware. The silver one, you get your standard chrome. And the ebony gets a really interesting one that turns from like a silver color to black. The pick guards are plated brass that match the color of the hardware. Resistance is futile. You have to love these guitars or I'm just going to keep buying them and showing you them until you do love them. I was really happy that my initial video of the Modern Flying V kind of helped inspire some people who initially hated this model to like it, you know, once they saw it in person. Because take a look at these stock photos. They look like garbage. 
It's nearly impossible to photograph the mirror pick guard and sparkle finish and do them justice. Speaking of that, they are a pain in the butt to keep clean. I really wish Gibson would have done like a clear plastic plating over them. Because as you can see on this gold one, it's showing quite a bit of wear and whatnot. The biggest complaint that most people have of these is because they can't afford one, or if they had that type of money, they wouldn't spend it on here. These originally retailed at $4,500. And I'm pretty sure all the new ones have been sold. I know Chicago Music Exchange got hung with like seven of these in silver. They had sold theirs as floor models and went down to 3,500. But that is the only color I ever saw get discounted. However, even if you compare full retail value, that's still half of what an original Roswell Rhodes will run you. So if you really love that design, this is technically a cheaper alternative. So while I do like the modern Flying V, unfortunately, it just wasn't designed very well in my opinion. It's very comfortable to play standing up on a strap. It's nice and lightweight. It plays great with kind of a medium chunky neck profile. But there's a few small things I would change, both cosmetically as well as functionally. The original design is good, but it could be better. The first thing, again, I would swap out the inlays to the Howard Roberts style. You wouldn't really see it from far away, but I think up close it would be a nice space age touch. The next thing I would do would be a string through body design. They probably didn't do this because it's too close to the Roswell Rhodes, but I think that really suits this guitar well. Once you get rid of that bridge, the pick guard definitely needs to be shaped the same way as the body. From there, I would personally rather have the three-way toggle switch be first in the lineup because I find it kind of awkward to get to when it's in between the volume and tone knobs. I would probably swap out the Nashville bridge for an ABR1 styled one simply because it's a slimmer look and that's what this guitar is resembling, a sleek futuristic vibe. Going along with that theme, I would want to thin out the headstock just a little bit. Maybe even throw the gearless Steinberger tuners on it, that way you don't even have any tuning pegs sticking off the side. The only other thing I would change is the output jack placement. I would put it closer to the strap button, that way you can tie your remaining lead in with your strap. This location right here would also allow you to sit and play with it. So you're probably wondering, how exactly did I get my hands on another one of these? This was actually a customer return. And it's funny because the very first thing I thought when I pulled out that Ebony Prism version out of its case was, oh man, I love the way that this neck looks as it joins the body. That's going to look terrible in a few years once that line starts to show. And that's what's happening here and the reason why the customer returned it. These are not actual cracks to the neck joint or anything. It's just the seam line starting to show and they will eventually do that on all models. But you can see that line starting to form on both sides. If you need verification, hey, we'll just show it to this guy over here. I'm a doctor, not a luthier. It would be highly illogical to think it was anything more than that. Now that we've learned a little bit more about the modern Flying V, as well as gotten to take another look at a gold version this time, let's go ahead and hear how this particular version sounds. <laughs>
we know how this modern flying V sounds, let's go ahead and review its condition. This instrument's in pretty darn good shape. I don't think it was played a lot, but it definitely has some signs of wear. You've got some light scratches on the face of the headstock here. And as I was saying earlier, these metal plates, they just show lots of uh, dirt and grime and whatnot, just, you know, from being out on a stand. I just polished the frets up, I wiped down the fretboard, that way it didn't look so dry as these always do. But nothing to worry about playability wise here. You've got some light micro scratches, you know, from picking and like a strap being on this instrument. But I don't see any like huge nicks or dings out of this thing, which, you know, could sometimes be a problem with these pointy guitars. So besides just some dirtiness to the metal pick guard here, as I was polishing this pick guard, be careful if you like this sticker here, because the Gibson will actually just polish off of the sticker. You could see that happened a little bit there. But the instrument is all original and perfectly functional. Back of the headstock, our serial number is Custom Shop 800, looks like 315. You've got your stock mini Grover tuners. Again, your apex head carve. You've got a really nice, super rounded neck profile here. I wouldn't call it baseball bat thick, but it's like a really nice medium profile. As we were discussing earlier, uh, you don't have any of the neck heel line showing on the back. It's just like halfway on each side of the neck. It is not actually structural. The guitar plays perfectly fine. Eventually all of these will start to show that line as the lacquer slowly sinks into that joining of the neck. Back of the instrument here, uh, you've got some light scratches and handling wear. Again, nothing too bad on this one. I would say the worst area of wear is you can see like the strap was kind of scratching against right here. But, I mean, even that in itself is very minor. The worst thing condition-wise are these finish check lines. We'll take a look around the edges here real quick. You do have binding. It's single ply. I think it would have looked cool if they would have multi-bound it. But you've got your strap button right here. Output jack there. And, I mean, this thing, it's in awesome shape. At this point, I think all the new ones are gone, so if you didn't quite get a chance to pick one of these up at retail value, you could get an awesome deal on this one. Just hang on to this. Hang on to it for like 10, 15, 20 years. You will see a pretty good return on your investment. I'm pretty darn sure. Black lighting a new guitar, eh, it doesn't do much for us, but it would kind of show us if there's ever been a touch up. So the front's good, back's good here, back of the headstock, everything okay. Face of the headstock, basically the only thing we need to look at is the neck joint here. And here's where you can see the lines once again, but no actual breaks. So we are good here on the black light test. This one does still retain its original Gibson Custom Shop case. It wouldn't fit in anything else. Uh, you've got three latches in total. One of them is a combo locking one, which has not been set yet. You've got some light shipping scuffs and just average light wear and tear, but nothing too major on the outside Tolex. The interior, I mean, it's just like any Les Paul custom case. It's got that burgundy colored material. The only thing I noticed is that the lining's kind of falling apart right here. I mean, it just kind of pushes back into place, but yeah, that's just a small complaint. Inside your compartment, you have the original certificate of authenticity, as well as a few hang tags and warranty information and some other goodies here. If you think you might be interested in being the next owner of this gold prism modern flying V, feel free to check out the link in the description that will take you to the Reverb for Sale ad. I hope you troglodytes enjoyed this special edition of the Troglies Guitar Show, and I hope you live long and prosper. We will see you on the next episode. Take care.